What's up everyone, Soldier First Class here, and today's mission, we're already blowing up with theories about Final Fantasy 16, and we've only gotten one reveal trailer. This time, one of my viewers has submitted a theory to me, and I wanted to give it some spotlight. It's entirely possible that Shiva's Summoner has already been seen in the trailer. I'll also be extending the theory with some of my own thoughts and references from previous entries in the franchise. Shout out to Corey Newman for submitting this theory to me. So Corey said, If I had to guess, I'd say the blue-haired girl laughing with Joshua is Shiva. I'd be willing to bet that the main character will recognize the girl, and instead of trying to assassinate her, he vows to protect her instead, to succeed where he failed protecting Joshua. He quits being a mercenary and seeks to find the truth behind the power of the crystals. So this basically parallels when Ramza quits being a mercenary and goes on his journey to find the truth. So I actually really like this theory for a few reasons. One, anything Final Fantasy Tactics related, especially story-wise, is fantastic in my book. And two, it actually makes sense given the context of the trailer. So let's go back in time in the trailer and find where this theory makes sense. When showing a young version of the main character, there's a scene with him and Joshua and a little silver-haired girl. Joshua is seen laughing and smiling with the girl before he's told he needs to go back inside. Typically, they don't show fully rendered characters in trailers like this in full view if they don't end up somewhere in the story there'd be no reason to focus on a random little girl that has no importance. We can also look at some of the finer details of the little girl and discover that this part of the theory lines up. If you take a look at what she's wearing, it's entirely in contrast to what Joshua is wearing. Joshua is seen in red, which would represent Phoenix, while the little girl is wearing white and black and her jewelry is an icy blue. We can also see the drawstrings on her shirt and the lower half of her shirt sleeve is the same color blue. These colors are deeply associated with Shiva and are in direct opposition to the fiery color that Joshua represents. Shiva also has lighter versions of the little girl's eye and hair color, which could mean nothing but also ties them together in another way. Since Shiva and Ifrit are so closely tied together in a lot of Final Fantasy lore and we potentially see Ifrit killing Joshua, it's possible that the main character believes she is the key to avenging him. We hear from the main character's own mouth that he's the shield or guardian of Joshua. From what we hear and see in the trailer, it appears that the main character fails in his duty and Joshua is dead. If this is the case, then him abandoning or possibly even being excommunicated from his kingdom makes sense. It also explains why he would have joined a new order of mercenaries or assassins. It's also possible that the little silver-haired girl could be his sister who he lost communication with after being exiled from his kingdom. We also know from the trailer that the group of tattooed men that he's with are after Shiva's dominant or summoner and wish to take her out. That would mean that he's got even more stakes riding on them getting to Shiva. There's also a very subtle moment where the main character is sitting by the campfire with his group, and while they're talking about Shiva, he begins to touch his tattoo, almost signifying that the tattoo on his face reminds him of his failed past and that he must embrace the tattooed order so that he can avenge that past. I could be way off with that, but Final Fantasy games love their symbolism, and it feels like everything in this trailer was extremely deliberate. There's a large-scale battle going on, and both sides have summoned their icons for even bigger battles. Now, keep in mind, this is all assuming that there's a time skip involved with the main character. Both player characters we see share similar abilities and similar facial features when compared side by side, with possible Final Fantasy XVI writer Kazutoyo Mihiro also being a developer involved with Final Fantasy Tactics, a time skip is highly likely. Time skips are something we saw in Final Fantasy Tactics with the main character Ramza and have also seen in Final Fantasy XV with Noctis. In the end of the trailer, a voice, assumed to be the main character, states, I'll kill you if it's the last thing I do. This gives me some clear Avenged Joshua vibes, and I honestly believe this is where the story is heading. The main character has failed his duty as Joshua's shield, but wishes to avenge him and protect others that are still capable of being saved. I'd also guess that once he gets to the person controlling Shiva, he'll walk away from being a mercenary or assassin, much like Ramza. A means to an end, and once those means run their course, we finally make some strides in gaining his revenge. To add on to this theory, I think we're seeing more than two kingdoms we know about so far. We have the Empire, and then whatever kingdom that Joshua and his father, the Archduke, belong to. I fully believe that each kingdom has their own elemental crystal and an associated icon to go along with it. We've seen two fire, one ice, and one earth-based icons, and at one point the main character is using an ability that could be Garuda's claws. Garuda is historically a wind elemental summon, and that would line up with the four common elementals used in Final Fantasy games. That being said, we also know that apparently there's never been two icons of the same element before, as stated by the man in the trailer when seeing Ifrit. I believe we have four distinct kingdoms at work here, all with their own icons, and a fifth unknown kingdom, or possibly even just a main villain, using an icon. 
Now you're probably asking, Soldier, if each kingdom has their own icon and crystal, how is the silver-haired girl Shiva's dominant? There's actually a really easy fix for that. When the main character fails to save or protect Joshua, his entire family is excommunicated from the kingdom as punishment. If the family sought refuge in another kingdom, we could then see the little girl become Shiva's dominant, as the crystal of the Ice Kingdom could have an effect on her. If we're actually seeing a time skip, which I fully believe we are, then this would help the theory line up as she would now be an adult. This is honestly giving me really heavy Game of Thrones and Final Fantasy Tactics vibes, and would fit into Final Fantasy's long history of kingdom warfare both politically and on the battlefield. There will be love, betrayal, rivals, loss, and all sorts of dark themes involved with this story, and I am all for it. Overall, I really enjoy this theory and the extension of it, and I hope some of it is actually true. We likely have a few years to find out, but Yoshi P has stated that news will be coming in 2021, so I can't wait to have my tinfoil hat ready for that. But it's time I leave it up to you in the comments section. Soldiers, does this theory carry any weight, and what theories do you have on Final Fantasy XVI? If I can find enough evidence to support it, I may just make a video on it. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to omni slash that like button. Let me know in the comments section below if you're excited for Final Fantasy XVI and what fan theories you might have. Subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell to join the ranks of Soldier today. And for all the latest Final Fantasy XVI news, rumors, and theories, I'm Soldier First Class, and I'm on to the next mission. Later, guys.